Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange. Today I want to talk about some science fiction and fantasy that I have been reading recently. There's a good variety here in terms of page length. I read a really long one and a couple short ones. All that being said, let's get started. First, let's talk about the long science fiction book and I read Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson. This is set in a near future where right at the beginning of the story, the moon explodes. And scientists aren't really sure of the cause, but soon enough they realize that it's gonna have catastrophic consequences on the future of Earth. Because as the moon is now in pieces, those pieces are starting to degrade in the atmosphere. And soon enough, they are going to rain down and wipe out the living population of Earth. So now scientists and explorers and governments are forced to scramble and try to make a plan to save humanity. And this is the book that I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the plot than I normally do. This is all very much advertised on the back of the book and in all of the marketing material. And it's kind of a case where you need to know the kind of book it is when you go into it because it's not so much a thriller, but more of an exploration of what would happen if if this event were to happen in the future. So right off the bat, you have a story told in three parts. In the first part, you have the scientists and community preparing for the end of the world. So they make a plan to take certain people with different scientific knowledge and background onto ships that are gonna carry genetic material and embryos with the intention that these people will carry on the population by being able to bring up humanity and continue our legacy with these new embryos that will grow into people. But the actual people on Earth are gonna die out. So this first section is in a way quite grim, but the author does a good job of not making it overly depressing. Certainly he does address the fact that you are going to see things break down and just see how humanity comes to terms with this. But the majority of the story is more based around the science and technology of preparing for this event. And you follow multiple characters in all of these parts where you get to see their different roles as they make their preparations. And so I found this first part absolutely fascinating. I was convinced I was gonna give the book five stars if it continued to be as strong as that first section was because I was engrossed. I just found it so fascinating and it was just such an interesting exploration of what could possibly happen and just absolutely fascinating. So I love that first section. The second section you go on after the rainfall has happened and the vast majority of Earth's population has been destroyed or killed and you get to follow the people that are on the ships trying to survive in this post-apocalyptic setting. And it's again very interesting. There were some slow sections that made me not love this one quite as much but it was very heavy in terms of the hard science and it was just what I was craving at the time. So I really did enjoy those sections for the most part. And I still very much enjoyed the book, thought I was gonna give it four stars. Well, then there is one more section, section three, where we jump ahead in time and through genetic manipulation, they are able to continue the population and you have seven human races that develop from seven different females that carry their own genetic material into these populations. And I like the concept of it because it was very much anthropologically focused because you get to see how these different groups interact, how they take the DNA and personality of those women and basically expand it into a larger population. But unfortunately, the section just didn't come together the way I wanted to. I just didn't find it overly interesting. I didn't care about the perspectives. And I think the book just suffered from that time jump because you just lost the connection because you just missed this whole chunk of time. And I really, really struggled with that last section. So I don't think this book can count as a favorite because I really had to force myself to finish it. But I still want to reread it because I love the first two sections. So while it wasn't a perfect read, if you're interested, I would recommend it to the right audience. It's very long, almost 900 pages. I personally listen to the audiobook because I love the narrator. It's uh, Mary Robinette Qual, if you're familiar with her, and I just thought she did a really good job. So very heavy on the science, very long, but 
for the most part, very fascinating until the end. Now, for a shorter piece of science fiction, I also read Walking to Alderban by Adrian Tchaikovsky, who of course is the same author who wrote Children of Time, but this book is very different in terms of plot and tone, so whether or not you enjoyed that book won't necessarily give you an idea of whether or not you'll enjoy this novella. The story centers around an astronaut named Gary, who has been sent out to investigate an alien artifact, and something goes wrong and he is left alone and lost in space. And what we are reading is basically his monologue explaining to the reader what happened and why he's out there. And from the synopsis, this book was described as being chilling and I thought that I would love this one. I thought the premise sounded just creepy and isolating and I was very excited when I got a chance to read it through Scribd. However, the actual execution of this book was not what I expected. I do not know why they put the word chilling in the synopsis because it's not chilling, it's humorous. And specifically, it's a British brand of humor that I don't personally connect with. It's not as silly as something like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but it's very goofy and it's just not that serious and it's just not my flavor of science fiction. I'm very hit or miss with humor in books to begin with. And when it comes to science fiction, I typically prefer them to just be very straight-laced, science-based, all of that. And you get very little science in this one. In fact, it's one that I would recommend more to people who don't normally read science fiction or at least really don't like the hard science fiction parts of the genre. So overall, I did not enjoy this one. I really should have DNF'd it, but it was so short because it was a novella that I kind of just pushed through and finished it, but I can't really recommend it. I did not enjoy it at all. Now, I want to talk about a piece of science nonfiction and that is Packing for Mars by Mary Roach, which is an account of how astronauts prepare to go into space, focusing a little bit on the psychological aspects, but primarily on the physical aspects of being an astronaut and what that does to our bodies. I have wanted to read this for so long. It has been recommended all over the place. It's one of Book Riot's like favorite nonfiction books. And I never have because everyone recommends the audiobook versions, but those weren't available through my library, so I kind of held off. However, when I got a subscription to Scribd, which has been fantastic, I got the chance to listen to the audiobook narration, which is definitely the way to go. I do have a link in my description box if you want to get a two-month trial for yourself, but back to the book, I'll say that I like this one, but I didn't love it. It is written almost 10 years ago, and because of that, it does suffer a bit from age space travel in general is just something that can become very dated when you're reading older books and since this book has been published other books have come out that I personally feel better represent the future of space travel so this one just felt dated in places unfortunately and the other thing I didn't expect is that it's very anecdotal I thought that it would be more informative I really wanted a comprehensive look at all the physical aspects of being an astronaut but instead it kind of just focused on the kind of topics that would maybe come up in like a dinner party situation. So it talks about like sex in space, pooping, and just a lot of really goofy things, a focus on the animals that were sent out into space before human. And while I learned things in this book, they're not things that I really feel like enhance my understanding of space exploration overall. So personally, I think there are better books out there, but again, if you're looking to get into some nonfiction about space, this one is very accessible. I don't read tons of nonfiction, and this one was very easy to get into. So I kind of recommend it, but not not an overwhelming, oh my gosh, you need to go out and buy this book right now kind of recommendation. So keep that all in mind. And finally, I want to talk about one fantasy book, and that is Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson, which is a novella that is technically set within the Elantris world, but it really does not spoil the book. It's very separate, and you could easily read this book before or after Elantris without spoiling either one. So I consider this to be very much a standalone novella, and I really enjoyed it. This story follows a young woman who is an art forger. She has an incredible ability to make forgeries that look like the real thing. 
At the beginning of the story, she is caught, but instead of being executed, she is tasked with taking on a very secret assignment. She finds out that the emperor of this realm has been attacked and he has lost his memory, his brain, his soul. And the doctors of this world were able to heal his body. However, his mind is blank. So they ask her to forge a soul. And this is where the fantastical elements come in because she is able to create a mind to place within his body. And the story is basically her trying to somewhat complete the task, but also knowing that asking someone to forge a soul is pretty impossible. And so she spends a lot of the book trying to make plans how to escape, how to get away, because she is very convinced that even if she does succeed in this task, she'll probably be killed. And I just found this book so absorbing. It was just interesting. I thought the characters were well done. There was a lot of good discussions about when something is real, versus fake with the whole conversation around forgeries in general and I was just wrapped up in the story. I thought it had a really good ending and I would definitely love to read more novellas set in this world. The magic system around making forgeries was so interesting. You know Brandon Sanderson, he does magic systems well and I would love to see this expanded into a larger book because I just thought this was super interesting. So again, even if you haven't read Elantris, if you want to check out this novella just for a quick fantasy read, I would definitely recommend this one. I had a lot of fun with it. So that's it for this video. You know the drill. I would love to hear your opinions on the books I talked about. Have I enticed you to check anything out? I would also love for you to recommend me some of your favorite long science fiction books and some of your favorite short ones. I definitely enjoy a mix of the two. Sometimes it's nice to get lost in a book for a really long time and sometimes it's so satisfying to pick up a novella and just fly through it and have another book under my belt. So all that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will talk to you again soon in another video. Okay, bye-bye.